Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We have Mike Aquilina in the house. I'm just reminded, uh, coming to you from Waikiki Beach here in Hawaii, of a day several years ago in Molokai, uh, my condo there near the ocean, and I began to hear big surf building, and then I began to hear boulders being knocked around by the big surf. And I knew that somewhere out in the distance there was a huge wave coming and that I probably had an appointment with it. Whether I liked it or not, I was probably going to paddle out the next morning. That's what it's like right now. We're in epic times. There's big waves of God's power and glory and is moving, and it's going to be here soon. You have epic waves to ride. We're in epic season in the history of God. History isn't just a random thing. God's on the move. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My adventure guide today is the guest that I have on my show more than everyone. Whether you like it or not, he's my favorite guest. I, I, it's just an excuse for me to get to talk with Mike Aquilina. I mentioned in the opening about the wave uh, the wave that I remembered one night in the middle of the night in Molokai, uh, down there on the west side, and hearing big surf building. And uh, I woke up to feeling adrenaline pumping, and I realized oh, I was hearing these waves. Even so big that boulders were being moved around, I could hear them crackling as it would explode and hit these, hit the rocks. And it was like I knew I had an appointment with a wave that was out maybe 20 or 30 or 40 miles out to see that would be there when I got up. That's what it's like right now. We're in epic times. Do you know, I remember I, I wrote a, a, a song back when I, in my youth. I'm not like Mike Aquilina. He actually writes uh, lyrics with, um, with, um, uh, What's his name Dion again? Kirby. With Dion. Dion, yeah. But the lyrics are, can you, this is the lyrics I wrote as a young man. Can you hear it rolling like thunder? The largest wave you've ever seen. Rolling and rolling out in the darkness. It will be here at the break of day. And then I wrote, through the ages, waves of glory have washed and cleansed the earth. But they're getting closer and stronger now, like during a child's birth. Jesus is coming soon. That may be thousands of years, but in the heart of every Christian, there's the cry, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. You know, Jesus is coming soon. But history isn't just these kind of uh, amalgam of random events. History is his story. God is at work. It appears to many of us that we're in some kind of new paradigm shift, that we're in some new place as far as as far as far the story, uh, the journey of mankind goes. There seems to be, the darkness seems to get be getting darker. There, the masks seem to be coming off, even though, as we say during this corona thing, we're supposed to be wearing masks. And I've invited Mike to be on the show because Mike can give us perspective and how the early church responded to the darkness uh, of its its era and how it arose to uh, it rose to uh, glory uh, in spite of the, the the enemy coming after them with all that he had Mike Aquilina welcome to the show hey thanks for having me back bear you guys you just I just love this guy so much I, I how many times I'm walking Cindy and I walk over to Fort Tarusi every day it's about a one mile walk and I, I'll read there or we'll play bocce ball or something uh, it's our end of the day kind of unwinding, and I always will sit there when I have my book with me, maybe having a cigar, and I'm going, I just want to be like Mike. I want to be like Mike Aquilina. I just want to read and write. You know, I just love it so much, and you're actually, you actually do that stuff. How many books have you written, by the way? Uh, more than 60, but I can't give you an exact number. So somewhere between Louis L'Amour and Augustine, you're somewhere in that, <laughs> in that range of books. <laughs> Oh man, I love you so much. Much I, I I love all that all of your books. I not that I've read all of them yet, but I do know you have a new book out, Work, Play, and Love. Those are three great. I mean, I I know for myself, Mike. If I'm not working, I don't feel right. If I'm not carrying a, a kuleana, if I'm not having stewardship over some sort of responsibility, and I like to play, and of course, <laughs> the greatest desire of everyone is to love and to be loved. So what, what's what's the before we get into this other deeper into this topic about what's happening in the world today. What is that book about? It's kind of surprising what it's about. Well, it's about three good things, work, play, and love, and about how in the context of the early church, those 
three realities, human realities changed. They were transformed. They were elevated because of the mass, because of the mass. The mass transformed work. Why? Because Christians brought the work of human hands to the altar where it was sanctified. You know, uh. That made work holy, right? And then, uh, and then uh, Christians also took every, everything that was leisurely, like all of the good play in life, music, art, all of those things dedicated it to worship. You see that in the catacombs, right? You see, you see those, those beautiful paintings on the walls at a time when, when the church was being persecuted. We also know that there was great music going on at that time, and it was transformed because of the Mass. And then finally, love, right? And what I'm talking about there is the love of charity, that, that what the church did when it gathered for the Mass was to collect its, its money, right, in the collection plate, and then apply that to society in a big way. It's and the it one tradition. It's the one tradition, Mike, that you know. Even churches to say we don't like tradition. They kept that yeah. tradition going. <laughs> uh, the collection. Nobody plate. wants to let go of that one, right? <laughs> right. That one's not ready for a reformation. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, they used it to take care of prison ministry, for example, in the early church. Again, at a time when the faith, the practice of the faith, was illegal. So, um, so yeah, work, play, and love were three human realities that were transformed and elevated by the Holy Mass. You know, the the, the word, I, I thought about this a couple of weeks ago. I was reading, I don't know, some of my many books <laughs> I love to read. There's a stack over there. Uh, but again, talking about the early church. And uh, I, I almost wondered, I don't like the word charity when I see it in the, when I, when I hear it used you know, in the in the in the uh, liturgy, or in the or in the in the uh, Catholic catechism, or in the mass, when I hear the word charity, I think this isn't about the Salvation Army, and I just why don't we use just use the word love? And I be, I came to realize that um, the word caritas, charity, is the is the word to use as Catholics. Basically, as Catholics, Aquinas said that the true that love is willing the true good, and of course. John Paul II really uh, hammered it home that it is self-donation, you know, yeah, to, to love. Know so, so, so caritas is giving. It's not a, a warm, gushy kind of love. You know, God so loved the world that he felt all gushy inside. He felt he loved the world so much that he gave of him. The Father gave of himself by giving his son, and Jesus came and gave his life. So as as Christians, caritas is is. The word charity for love is exactly the right word because it's not just feeling warm and fuzzy. It's giving away yourself in love for the right good. Yeah, I think when people today use the word charity, they often mean what the ancients meant by philanthropy. Okay, mm. Philanthropy is institutional usually. It's impersonal. It's kind of vague, you know, just based on a good feeling about humanity. Charity is different. It's laying yourself on the line. It's um, it's it's the gift of yourself primarily, and and money or or time or whatever secondarily. But it's all out of love, and it's a personal love. You're looking people in the eye. If I say to my wa- wife, which I tell her all the time, it annoys her. I love you so much. Well, that's nice, but w- it's almost like, what have you done for me lately? Have you emptied the garbage? You know, I mean, love is is not just words. It's it's love is an action verb. They say right, love is love yeah. is. And the other thing is I posted to the to Bear's Man Cave the other day a little a gif, I think you call it that, where I, I basically, it's it was a warrior, and he was saying, no one cares about your opinion, they care about your actions. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, so to say, I'm pro-life, no, that's just your opinion. What are you doing about it? The mm-hmm. Catholic, to a Catholic, love is something in action. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so, so in light, I want to kind of get the, the the ball rolling. In light of what's been happening in the world today, uh, do you sense that there's a more of a stark contrast between light and dark right now? I think every now and then, uh, God kind of turns the lens for us, and things come into sharper focus. Uh, this isn't the only period like this in history, but yeah, I think that there are certain things that are kind of being forced to a crisis right now. Uh, I, I, I've been thinking a lot about the middle of the third century, and it's interesting because at that time, uh, the uh, the world itself was facing some real crises. One was climate change, 
there was real climate change going on at the time. The temperatures were dropping. And so in, in places like Egypt, the Nile wasn't flooding. And so there wasn't much of a yield of crops. And this was catastrophic for the people who lived there. Um, and there were there were other things uh, that happened maybe as a result of that. But there, there was a pandemic that hit the world mm. at the same time. Mm. Today we call it the Plague of Cyprian. And it really did spread. It, 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 according to historians, it killed a third of the people living in the Roman Empire at the time. You know, in, in today's in today's um, numbers, it would have been more than a billion people, you know, to kill the same percentage mm. of uh, folks on the no known earth. So these were going on. And then there were other things. The world was at war at the time. So, because, so we've been we've been in this place before. We're talking with Mike Acalina. We got to take a hard break, Mike. But okay. he's just getting the ball ready to push down the hill here. We're going to talk about this this season that we're in, yeah. and uh, talk about how the early church responded in faith and power uh, to their to their times as, as we as we are called to do now. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. Mike's newest book is Work Play Love. Every book he writes everyone should read <laughs> it's, it's they're, they're just great books if you want to find us go to bearwasnick.com and uh, check out all the great stuff we have there we'll be right back with more of the bear wasnick adventure hey man i don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter you get free video content including the bear wasnick radio show video version on youtube before it even airs on ewtn and you can follow us on all of our social media go to deepadventure.com and subscribe get your free stuff and if you're watching on youtube don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell don't miss out mahalo for your kokua in supporting us Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak coming to you from Waikiki Beach. I got to meet with Monsignor Gino, who at that time in, at the Vatican uh, was in charge of the new evangelization for the English-speaking world. We began to share with him what we were doing with Long Ride Home, our TV show and our radio show, reaching out to men with a real gritty message. In other words, we're not preaching to the choir. We're trying to reach men and, and do it in a manly way that they can uh, listen to and respond to. Reaching men is, first of all, the hardest thing there is to do. And then reaching men that may not even ever have been in a church is, is challenging as well. And he said to us, you guys are doing the hard thing. He said, what you're doing is something I haven't really seen hardly anybody do effectively, and it's so important, but you're doing the hardest thing. And I think that's, that's uh, I take that as, uh, as an affirmation of what we're doing, because God always calls us to do the bold and the hard thing. So, so, we want, so we need your help is basically what we're asking you. If you want you go to our website, deepadventure.com, help us spread the, the work of what we're doing. Our, our, our web store has so many great things. This radio show that you're listening to with Mike is actually, there's a YouTube version of it available. You can go to our Bear Wozniak YouTube channel and subscribe, and you can share it with your friends. And then you become part of this, this, this ministry, uh, basically, that does the hardest thing. And you can go to our Patreon on site, too, and help us there because we, although this show is on EW10, we don't receive any funding from EW10 to, to put it together. So if you want to become a part of doing the hardest thing there is, join us. Share our, share our, YouTube, our YouTube version of this. Uh, 
Subscribe to our, our, our email newsletter and you'll get this, this show a day earlier. If you become a ba- Patreon donor, you get it months before it airs. You get the, the episodes of Long Ride Home. The minute we have the director's cut done, which can be a half a year before it airs on EWTN, you can get that. But come and be part of what we're doing. Especially, I want to invite the women. We need your help reaching your men. Come to our website, deepadventure.com. Mike, that was a long introduction. I shouldn't do that because I got Mike Aquilina here. We're talking about this this moment in history right now, and he was talking about how, at the at in the year two hundred and fifty or in the in the in the third century, yeah. there was a season where there was a pandemic. There was there was global freezing, not global warming, and uh, and 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 then Christians had to face this. What else was coming on the world at that time that seemed to hit all at once? Well, as I said, there was climate change, and then there was a plague. Uh, there was economic collapse because of climate change and the plague. There was war going on, and there was an active persecution of the church. Okay, uh, everyone was forced to carry around a ticket, a libellus that that uh, could, you know, if you were stopped on the street, you could show your ticket. It said that you had offered incense to the genius, to the idol of the emperor. So, so, uh, so the church was being actively persecuted, and all of these other things were going on. I'd say that's a major crisis. It's everything we're experiencing today, and then some. And you had the barbarians who were coming in at all the all the borders. All right, uh, Rome was in conflict with Persia. That was the big, you know, superpowers. Uh, the war of the superpowers. But there were also the various barbarian tribes coming in all around the edges of the empire. And so there were these these simultaneous crises going on in the third century. But, but it's crises like that that made real Christian heroes. You know, there's that great line from St. Jose Maria from the 20th century. These world crises are crises of saints. And mm. really, this is what tested the mettle of men like Dennis the Great in Alexandria, Cyprian the Great, in North Africa, they were just Dennis and Cyprian until they were made great by their hard times. Mm. So it, it is like that wave I talked about in the first section. There's this wave yeah. rolling like thunder that's out there in, in the middle of the darkness, and I could hear the rumbling. I had a sense it was coming. Uh, we we have a, we each of us are are, are destined for something uh, bold and powerful in the Lord. We, uh, uh, but we get to have a choice of how we are going to respond to these, these circumstances and rise to the occasion, and and serve the Lord. You know, if you're if you're if you're a Christian, uh, and you're not being bold, you're probably missing uh, missing what the Lord's asking you to do. Because if you're a Christian, you're asked to be bold. So t- tell us more. How do we respond in these times, as the early saints did? What what is God asking of us uh, in these times? Well, first of all, I don't think that it's it's optional not to respond. We have to actively respond to our times. Um, we can't just kind of fall back in fear or in apathy because we feel helpless. You know, the problems that we're facing are pretty big. They're huge, but they're not bigger than God. Mm. And if we look down through history, God chooses the weak vessel all the time mm. to change history and to, mm. to, to get things onto the right course, okay? David wasn't the big hulking guy he was Mm -hmm. he was the little guy goliath laughed at him Mm. and david won the battle okay and that's been the pattern all through history that's the first thing you know that we want we want to resolve to respond the second thing is we need a foundation in our lives okay we need regularity in our lives and i'm i'm not talking about brand cereal i'm talking about uh, uh, a regular, <laughs> disciplined life of prayer, okay? That we accept certain disciplines on our time, and we're going to do them every day. And, like, you'll figure out with your spiritual director, maybe, and with your wife, what you have, what you have the ability to do, okay? You'll make time for it if it's important, but we need a sustained and disciplined life of prayer. Are you doing the rosary every day? Can you get to Mass every day? Maybe can you make a visit to the Blessed Sacrament every day? Maybe you can't do all those things, but you can do some of them. And then you can kind of be on an inclined plane, taking a little bit at a time, you know, building up your stamina and finding out what you can do. Because here's the thing. 
you're not going to be able to face those things by yourself. You're going to need the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. And the Holy Spirit has all the power in the world and then some, but he doesn't want to just give it to you. He wants you to correspond to it. You got to reach up, you know, and show your openness for it and make yourself open to it. And then, then God will change the world through you. Okay, and that's the end of our show. <laughs> that, that, that says it all. We're talking with Mike Aquilina. His new book is Work, Play, and Love. But, you know, you, so much of what you said, Jeff, Jeff Cavins uh, says that, you know, you can tell what you value in your life by the rhythm of your day. Yeah. You know, and, yes. and do, you, do you, for example, do you start your day out in, in prayer? Do you, do you have an actual rhythm of getting up early before the rest of the household, speaking especially to you men, uh, do you carve out time in the evening with your with your like when Cindy and I walk, um, praying the rosary together, you know, or 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 spending some time in the evening, uh, we watch um, some sort of half hour show or something uh, educational. Uh, uh, maybe it's EWTN or maybe it's uh, uh, something from um, uh, Bishop Barron or or Mike Aquilina or or Matthew Leonard. Uh, on the early church or, or something like that to form us in our faith. But we're we're proactive. We're not letting it just happen to us. Mike, um, in 2007, my son Jeremiah Pat, uh, uh, went out on a jet ski with my friend Crazy Todd, and he towed Jeremiah into 85-foot to 100-foot waves. Wow. The question is, what did, what did what the big day came, and was he ready? That's the question. And he was. He had been training his whole life for that big day. He had gradually worked himself up, bombing big, big hills on his skateboard, for example, but also surfing bigger and bigger waves, 20-foot, 30-foot, 40-foot surf at Waimea. And that summer, he and I had gone out. We had paddled out at, Wa at Waikiki Beach, uh, out kind of to the outer reef. And we would then, you know, dive down, off our, get off our surfboards, dive down and grab a boulder and run underwater with holding that boulder to hold us down. And uh, holding our breath and kind of gaining, gaining um, our ability to hold our breath while doing cardio. And so he was, yeah. he was prepared for that big day. But ultimately, on, on that big day when he went out with, with Todd, and no one else was out surfing. I think later on, a couple other people brought, came out with jet skis because the waves are so big you can't paddle in. You have to be towed in. After he caught his first wave, which was only 45 foot, uh, Crazy Todd said, you like go big. You want the big one. Jeremiah didn't answer him for a full minute. Huh. And then he said, because what, basically even on a 40-foot wave, when you go out, you, you've already made the commitment to die and then believe enough in your partner that he will rescue you and revive you. And he had to really decide, was he ready to die? And that's really where we are as Christians today. Are you preparing? Are you doing the underwater rock running? Are you... Are you paddling into bigger and bigger surf? Are you doing the things that build up your acumen, your skill, your knowledge, your faith formation? Because when the big wave comes, you have to be saying, this is a good day to die. I'm willing to give it all. We're talking with, with Mike Aquilina. His new book is Work, Play, and Love. Uh, talking about the, the elements of the mass. But Mike has written so many books. Where can they find you, Mike, if they want you to come speak? Oh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm at fathersofthechurch.com, fathersofthechurch.com, or mikeaquilina.com. Both URLs are the, the same site. Yeah, um, invite Mike to come. We, the first time we met was actually when yeah. we were speaking where, was it Kansas or Oklahoma? I forget where we were. It was Kansas, yeah. Yeah, and it was the, I think they had it called the, the Theologian. The, the surfer and the exorcist. Those were the three speakers. But really, that's, that's a good way to say it. You need to, have the, you need to have the faith formation of the theologian. You need to have the surfer who knows how to, to pray and, and move in the power of the Lord, right? And then you need to have that exorcism. You need to be, need to be geared up and ready for spiritual battle. Uh, this is yeah. Bear Wozniak. We'll be back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Our guest is Mike Aquilina. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men. Yes, 
we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bears Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite you women to come and be part of our ministry. Uh, we're doing the hard thing, and we know women are the biggest, uh, the biggest uh, followers of what they love. What we do, but we don't want you to think that you can't be part of it. Come and be part of our ministry. Share, come to our website, get our newsletters, share our videos, get your men to our website. Uh, even maybe help them get a subscription, a membership to Bears Man Cave. It's it's a it's such an unusual and cool thing, and we've been doing it for two or three years now. And what it is, it's a it's a secret group. It's a secret Facebook group, I should say, but you can't join it by going to Facebook. You have to go to our website. You could go to our website and get a membership for your man, or men you can come to. And what it is is we share with each other on Facebook uh, our challenges, uh, our inspirations. We, 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 ch- we share with each other things that we equip each other and mobilize each other. And people will come and say, well, I don't think I can be a part of that group. I'm, I'm, I've got all these things that I'm even ashamed of. I don't know if I can, you know, I, I can't really be a part of a group like that. And then you come and you realize, oh, there's just a bunch of knuckle dragging guys all with the same challenges, all bozos on the same bus. But I like to think of us, Mike, Aqu- uh, Mike Aquilina is with us. Mike, I like to think of us as the cave of Adullam, where the misfits showed up. People that owed money, people that were on the run, showed up and joined King David and they became a mighty band of warriors. That's what the Man Cave is, and we want to invite you. Go to deepadventure.com. You'll see a a warning button that says, Stop, do not enter. That's the place you have to enter to become part of the Man Cave. But either men you join or women go there and and join on behalf of your men, and let's get them started on a deeper walk with the Lord. Mike Aquilina, so we were talking more about this this season that we're in and how it seems alarmingly, uh, alarmingly, you know, dark. With the pandemic, and then we've had these the, the riots and 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 the economy, and we don't know what's going to happen next. What is what lessons can we learn from the early church in regards to the season that we're in right now? Well, from the early church, we learn when it's dark, be light. You know, mm. change the world that way. Mm. Uh, you know, we we think back on that time, and uh, you know what we know about the early church is that it grew, it grew at a uh. rate of 40 percent per je- decade for almost 300 years right through that <laughs> season of darkness that church worldwide now how did that happen there was no ewtn then there were no electronic media there, w- there weren't even any print media at that time there mm. were no newspapers there was no real um access to the public square except through friendship okay we changed the world one family at a time one friendship at a time people changed the way their neighbors thought about life and that's how the world was changed just by that little bit of life you know we probably have unreasonable ideas about history we you know so many people think that the the world was changed because somebody went out in public and preached the gospel into the forum okay and crowds and crowds of people decided to become christians on that day the only evidence of that ever happening in history was on Pentecost Sunday. Right. I never thought of day. that. Wow. That was it. That's true. And it's almost as if God gave us a hard push at the beginning and then said, okay, you guys take it from here. And that's the way a father works with his son. Maybe you give him a hard push at the beginning, but then you let him do his thing. All right. Mm. So that he knows it's his. And God, God works with us that way. He gives us the grace to get us going, but he wants us to correspond to that grace. He wants us to grow into the image. He wants us to grow into the imitation of Christ. And the early Christians did that. They didn't do it in, in the public square. The clergy were public Christians, and they usually died for it. Mm. But the laity were the ones who were changing the world. And it still is. It still is, isn't That's it, Mike? It. Absolutely. I agree with you, Bear. We have more opportunity so, I mean, to go ahead, Mike. Uh, that's, that's what I was going to say. I think we're. I think you and I are stepping on each other because we want to say the same thing. 
You know, it's up to the laity to take ownership of the new evangelization because it was the laity who who made possible the old evangelization. Mm. You know, I remember as a young kid, um, I was probably five or six, and I was learning to ride a bicycle. And my dad was uh, getting his master's degree, and he was, uh, I don't know, he was working all kinds of jobs. And one of the things is he was working at a gas station on the weekend, which is just about four or five blocks from my house. And I would kind of, almost kind of wobbly pedal my bicycle. I couldn't turn it, though. <laughs> and I got there, and I remember my dad would say, okay, you ready to go back? And he would he would run, and he would give me the the most exhilarating feeling I ever had is when he had pushed me on that bike and get me in, yeah. get me into that, and that's that's the exhilaration of the Holy Spirit that, that that God has for us. But you know your gifts and your abilities that you have, men and women, the natural inclinations that you have, God made you that way for a reason. Use those gifts and talents that you have, and uh, reach out. You know, strike up a conversation. You know, one of the best things you can do uh, is if there's someone in your life that you see, oh, they really need the gospel, especially maybe someone who's offended you. That's kind of like a, a, a an appointment with God right there to begin to pray for them. Pray for them and then find out how God can open a door to a conversation by asking them questions and asking them questions and sincerely caring about them. And one of the things I have found, Mike, is is when I'm when I'm, I'm every day I, I start the day with Lord, um, open up the hearts of people. Let me share the gospel. You know, give me an opportunity to share the gospel. And uh, and as I get to know people, because I'm a radio interviewer, I find I ask people a lot more questions. And when they, when you ask people questions and they really see that you're interested, because everybody, no matter how boring they look, is uh, has a great story to tell. Sure. Everybody's Rocky Balboa. Everybody's overcoming adversity. You know. Um, yeah, it's like uh, it's like the the, the saying from um, uh, Lord of the Rings. Wonder what kind of adventure this is going to be that we're going on, or I'm yeah. ready to go on an adventure. But ask people questions and let them begin to open your heart, their hearts. And then when you see what's real, where their heart really is, begin to talk about that and say, "Can I pray with you? Not for you, with you." And then right at that moment, if it's not an awkward situation, and don't make it awkward, just. Ask the Lord to bless them right there. And as soon as you do that, when the Holy Spirit shows up, doors start to open. But be bold in your evangelization. God boldly wants to back you up. So don't be afraid to do that person-to-person evangelization. And that's what you're saying, Mike, that that the priests are there for after they're evangelized, right? we got to get them there. That's right. we got to get them there. Um, one of my favorite documents from the early church is a novel, actually, a, a, an a autobiographical novel by a guy named Minutius Felix, and it's called The Octavius. And he tells the story of just a trip that he took to a resort with two of his buddies. They went to the beach, and they were walking along the beach, and that was it. It was a day out with a couple of his buddies and the conversation they had. Two of them were Christians. The other one wasn't until they did these two days of talk together at the resort. And by the end of that, that their time together in Ostia, uh, mm. the third one was Christian. You know, he had a conversion of heart. And, it, and, and it's not so much that we need to, to be able to do arguments. We don't need to be theologians to be evangelists. What we need is to be friends. We need to be friends and primarily friends of the Holy Spirit. We need to be, be um, wanting to expand our circle of friends so that we're bringing other people closer to Christ through our own lives. And we have to have the confidence that God will be there with us, and he'll make that happen. You know, we all love Catholic answers. Yeah. We all love the apologists. We all love Mike Aquilina. We love the theolo- the theologians. But Dad, 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 God, that is his name, Dad, actually. But God didn't ask us to be um, a theologian necessarily or to be a, an apologist. He asked us to be witnesses. Yes. Anybody can be a witness. It's like... How can you? It, I remember my dad when the whole our whole family went through this beautiful deep conf- conversion experience, and they said, "God wants you to be a witness." And he goes, "Am I going to witness an accident tomorrow? What's going to happen?" You know, no. It's easy to be a witness. All you do is just testify. I don't know. I can't explain it to you, but I just know that I know Jesus, mm-hmm. and I know that He loves me, and I know what yeah. I experienced in adoration in the Eucharist, and I've seen how the Lord. Uh, when there's been a dark time in my life, how the Lord has been there to see me through it and to knock down walls. Just witness to your experience of the Lord. That's what people want to hear. They want to hear personal witness. You don't have to theologize with people, right? Yeah. And if they ask you a question and you don't know the answer, say, I don't know, but I'll find out for you. 
And guess what? Then both of you grow. And that's a great thing that happens. Just say, give me, give me 24 hours on that. I'll come back with an answer. And usually you, you know where to go. You know, you can call up a friend or you can call up your parish priest or you can email somebody online, you know, email an or, expert. Or go to the catechism or Catholic answers. Yeah. or You can you, find an answer. You know, just say, give me 24 hours. I don't know the answer. And they'll, they'll find your honesty refreshing. You know, as a CPA, uh, people will ask me some really bizarre questions. But I always tell them my favorite thing to do is to do the research. I'll check that out and get back to you. You know, they hear, they hear something at a cocktail party or they've, Got some unusual twist, and it's and it's true. Tony Orband, one of the members of Long Ride Home, he says that when he has a question, he realizes there's someone a lot smarter than that already thought about that or asked that question earlier, and he can do the research and find out. So, and the other thing is, that one of my one of my best friends here in Hawaii is a, an evangelistic uh, atheist, hmm. the one that towed my son into 85 foot waves. You'd think that would make him a believer, just having to go out in big waves. But he's so hysterical, and he's such an he's such an evangelist for atheism, and he's just such a great guy and a great father, and and d- does so many great things. But he'll 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 make me do the hard research, right? About about the, the five reasons from uh, the five proofs from reason from Aquinas, and I had to really study uh, why there is a God because of my son, because of my friend and my son's friend, uh, Crazy Todd Robertson, who we give a shout out to right now. We're talking to Mike Aquilina. He his he lives. Uh, his his favorite book was written probably at least fifteen hundred years ago. He loves the study of the early church. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My adventure guide is Mike Aquilina. We invite you to go to YouTube channel if you want to see how good looking Mike Aquilina is. Uh, this this radio show that you're listening to is actually available on YouTube, and uh, you can subscribe to it by going to the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel, just pr- pressing the subscribe button and ring the bell. And the cool thing about that is you can press that little thing down at the bottom that says share, and you can share this with your friends. Uh, it, 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 we were talking earlier about how you, people might have a question for you as you evangelize that you may not know, and, uh, and so you can go do the research. Well, this is a great way for you to answer their questions. Just send them any video that I've done with Mike Aquilina, and it's just chock full of, of, of just solid teaching. The thing, Mike, you know what's interesting is how in the early church, uh, the book of, you know, the, the Bible came, came into being over, over time, and, uh, and uh, but how do we, but what I love about the early church is 
you know, uh, during the time of, of Augustine, Plato kind of was somewhat kind of rediscovered with Neoplatonism, you know. And in the time of Aquinas, there was Aristotle was hanging out, right? He came, he had a comeback, I think, uh, you know, the, 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 they found the books of, of Aristotle. Uh, and the beautiful thing about the Catholic faith is fide et ratio, faith and reason, they go hand in hand that, uh, that you can, that's why priests are trained in philosophy first so that they can properly, properly syllogize from what Revelation has. If Revelation says this, and then that means that. If that means that, then that means that. And that's why when I pick up the catechism every morning and do my Ocean Sunrise Catechism, Mike, it all it's not like I'm just, oh, well, the Ch Catholic Church says it, so it's true. It's so beautiful. The truth is so beautiful in how everything builds on each other. You know, you're going from one thing to another thing and, 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 and the richness of it. But, it, but the, this richness of the seed that was planted, as Catholics, we don't add to anything that the early church father had had or, the, or, or Jesus taught, but it's a seed that flourishes and blossoms and grows. So tell us more about how the early church responded to the times that we may find ourselves in right now that are, that are very challenging and seem to be almost like a paradigm shift in our world and the darkness seems to get beginning darker. Tell, tell us more about how the early church responds to that. Well, it responds with confidence, and I think mm. about uh, faith and reason, as you just as you just pointed out. Uh, what we see what we see in the early church is that uh, that so many great minds converted to Christianity because they were attracted by its openness mm. and its confidence. There was this sense in the early Christian thinkers that everything that's good out there already belongs to us as Christians. It belongs to my Father God. And mm. everything that's his is Christ's, and everything that's Christ's is mine, because I'm incorporated into Christ. So we have a, a guy like Justin Martyr, who was raised in a pagan family, and he was a seeker. You know, he, he, was, he wanted to know the truth of life. So, you know, he went to one teacher after another, went to a lot of the, the philosophical schools, and he w didn't find satisfaction in any of them. Until he met this guy walking on, on the beach, and he... He, you know, an old guy, and he asked him about truth, and the guy told him about the prophets of Israel and how all of their oracles had come true in the ministry of one man, Jesus Christ. And it was fairly recently. This was a 100 years before, and less than a 100 years, actually, and Justin had this conversion. Then mm. Justin started engaging the philosophical tradition, Plato, Aristotle, uh, you know, all of these great thinkers and finding what was good in them mm, mm -hmm. and yep. seizing it for Christ, taking it to Christ and showing how the only way that you can really enjoy what's going on in Plato is by seeing it from a Christian perspective. Plato himself is incomplete. He can only mm -hmm. take you so far. Mm -hmm. Aristotle himself is incomplete. He can only take you so far. But once you have Christ, you can see the big picture and you gain all the things that are good in all of those philosophical mm -hmm. systems. So I think that's what Christianity gave to the world, this kind of openness, this desire to synthesize what's good in all the different schools of thought. You know, Mike, uh, I'm just, this just comes to home so much of my own personal experience. When I was in college, I began to pursue truth through um, thinking maybe in Eastern religion there would be truth, you know, so I began to pursue that through the martial arts. Mm -hmm. And then I remember this was at Baylor University. It's a Baptist university, even though I was, you know, raised Catholic. And I took a really incredible philosophy course. There was about a dozen of us in a room that looked a lot like your room, filled with uh -huh. books, beautiful conference table. There's just a dozen of us there, and we went on a journey through the philosophy and uh, philosophy. And I, and like you know, Plato, uh, you know, Socrates, it, you know, but and, and then of course all the way through some of the craziness of the enlightenment and all of that but i saw in each of these philosophies this is so good this is this is so, this is gr oh no that it doesn't it, you know it, it would fall short and then i and then and then uh you know socrates then plato then aristotle and then going through all of these philosophers and it would be like it's just eastern religion doesn't have it for me um you know the plato's republic is like mm, almost you know wasn't quite like the City of God by Augustine, who we really didn't talk about, you know. But at some point, this is what happened to me, Mike. I had been, I was a junior in college. I was very righteous. Never had a drink. No sex outside of marriage. I didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus, though. 
I hadn't had that encounter with God. I'd been raised in the church, but really didn't, had no traction at all. And I got to the point where I said, well, God, if, if, if that's all there is, then why am I living like this? If, 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 if that's all there is, then why don't I just do, uh, you know, uh, wine, woman, and song, or sex, drugs, and rock and roll, right? Why don't I just live like that? Because I can't find you, and, and I've found, I've looked in Eastern religion, I've looked through philosophy, it all seems to fall short. And that was the moment when God grabbed me, when He got yeah. real with me, and I, I had that personal encounter with Jesus Christ. But yeah, but but the philosophy then going back to it, I had this desire for truth, and the early church fathers, some of them actually called Socrates and Plato saints, because five hundred five hundred. <laughs> uh huh. Go ahead. Saint Justin Martyr seemed to think that uh, that Socrates was a Christian ahead of his time. Yeah, he was martyred, right? Right. But because. Right, right. Yeah, for truth, for the sake of truth. And, and, and God did do something special with the 500 years before Christ when he began to build in this, this system of thinking that had never been, uh, never existed before. Clement of Alexandria had a great way of looking at it. He said that God never abandons anyone. And so that for his chosen people, Israel, he gave them the law. And in a similar way, for these other people, for the Greeks... He gave them philosophy so that they could prepare them, their, themselves for the Messiah in that way, by preparing their mind, by preparing their reason, honing it in preparation for the coming of the Christ. Right, and so you see, you see philosophy, the love of truth, you know, and you see Paul, but you're going back to the first thing you said, Paul shows up in Athens. I've been there, I'm sure you have too, at the Areopagus, I guess that's how you say it, where yes. he spoke with all these people that are always interested in the latest, newest philosophy. He didn't, he didn't leave. That's not where it happened. It happened afterwards when he spoke one-on-one yeah. -on -one with people that people were led to conversion. What should our response be right now as, as fathers, especially uh, with this season that we're in right now with, in regards as to our father, families? As fathers, you know, I, I'm going to go back to what I said before, and that is we need to live a sustained and disciplined life of prayer. Two people I really admire. One is Pope John Paul II. You know, the, th the image from his childhood that was formative for him was seeing his father, a widower, on his knees in front of his bed at night. Seeing mm -hmm. your father pray is an invaluable thing. Uh, so, I mean, to humble ourselves that way and let ourselves be seen that way, uh, that, that we're vulnerable before God, you know, that we're not always the strong guy. Before God, we're vulnerable. Um, so that, you know, that, that's, that, oh, so I said Pope John Paul II. Um, the other guy is Dion DiMucci, who's my songwriting partner. Uh, he's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Really? This is so cool. Tell us about Dion. That's, we, you know. <laughs> well, you know, one, one, one of the things that transformed him was when he was walking by his father-in-law's bedroom, and he saw the man, this big John Wayne of a guy, he calls him, and he was down on his knees in front of his bed, with his head bowed like a little boy, mm. saying his prayers before he went to bed at night. Mm. And that really did change Dion's heart. So I think that that's where it has to begin. Another practice I like to recommend is praying to the guardian angels of those around us. Mm -hmm. Really get to know the guardian angels of your wife and your children and greet them when they walk into the room. Ask those guardian angels for help. Ask your own guardian angel for help so that you can communicate with them in the way that's most effective. Because usually that's not what we're thinking. We're thinking down the wrong alley. Mm. But if we we're working with the angels, then we're working with master communicators. But angelos, angelos, the, the word that from mm. which we get angel means messenger. They know how to deliver a message and they'll help us deliver the message in the most effective way. Yes. Sometimes it might be by shutting up. <laughs> hey Mike, speaking of which, the show's over. We got to shut up here. We're talking with our my my the guest I have on the show more than anyone, Mike Aquilina. He has such a love for the Lord and such a love for the early church fathers. He and I live back there, don't we? We kind of like I live I live back there. I, I you know from about 0 a a AD or whatever forward. I like to read those old books and those. I can never, I'll never get enough of it. I, I, I but Mike Aquilina, thank you for being on our show. People can find you where? Fathersofthechurch.com. And you can find all of his books. There's, I just looked at all of them yesterday. There's 
tons of books of his, about 60 books on Amazon uh, or, or at his websites, and I invite him to come speak. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. we got to go. Uh, until next time, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.